Very rarely am I busted on something where I'm right. You know, if someone's taking the trouble to let me know I've said something wrong, chances are I'm wrong. Penn Jillette is a celebrity known for being a magician and for having his own show called Fool Us, where magicians appear on the show and try to fool Penn. And it's up to Penn to figure out how the magician did their trick. Penn is also known for being an outspoken atheist. He has written books and made videos about atheism. He's been known for being one of the leading atheists in the world. You are the chief atheist out there. How did you get here? He has spoken about atheism publicly, and he has even had public conversations with Richard Dawkins, who is one of the other leading atheists in the world. He did something called the Blasphemy Challenge, where people publicly denounce the Holy Spirit of God. Hi, this is Penn Jillette. Of course, I, uh, I denounce the Holy Spirit. He identifies with being an atheist so much, he even got a vanity license plate for his car that reads atheist, and it's said that he has two others that includes godless and no god, and one of his books is titled God No. I have empirical proof that God exists, and since Penn is an expert at figuring out people's illusions, he even has a television show where he does this, it is noteworthy to ask Penn if he can try to figure out if this evidence for God is true or not. Because if my evidence for God's existence were not true, surely someone like Penn could figure out how this evidence is not real. Like how Penn can dismantle a magic trick and understand how it's done. I had an interaction with Penn Gillette where I told him that I had evidence of God's existence. I did this by sending Penn Gillette a message on Cameo. Cameo is a platform on the internet where you can ask a celebrity to make a video for you and you can send them messages through the service. You can ask them to send you a birthday message or ask them a question or ask them to do something else. I sent Penn Gillette a message asking him to review my testimony and to review my video that proves that God exists and that Christianity is true. I told him that if he wanted more money for his time to review this video, he could name his price. He declined to review the video. I found this interesting that Penn has been mocking Christianity and has been saying that there isn't enough evidence for God. And once I hand the proof over to him that God exists, and I even offer him money to review the evidence, and still he refuses to look at the evidence. It's interesting that someone who has put so much effort into criticizing Christianity over the years and saying that there isn't enough evidence for God in Christianity refuses to look at the proof for God's existence. And he should also understand my position and take it seriously, since he has been outspoken about how important it is for Christians to proselytize to people, especially if they truly do know that God is real and if there is a hell. And I've always said, you know, that I, I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that, uh, well, it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward. And atheists who think that people shouldn't proselytize, just leave me alone, keep your religion to yourself. Uh, how much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that, that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. And I've always thought that, and I've written about that, and I've thought of it conceptually. I continue to message Penn and I will let the rest of the conversation that Penn and I had speak for itself. After Penn refused to look at the proof of God's existence that I offered him, I sent him a message saying, It is interesting that atheists will resist being paid to inspect the evidence. Atheists deceitfully ask for proof for God, but then they cowardly run away from the proof for God, so they can willfully be ignorant. And Penn Gillette replied back to me, Well, I'm sure your insult and broad brush painting comes from a very kind position, I respect that it's important to you and that it's important to me. I read a bit, and I'm sure if the evidence is compelling, I will see it soon. I mean, it's certainly the biggest news in history. Thanks for your time and offers. So Penn accused me of insulting him in broad brush painting and insinuated that I'm not a kind person and that I'm not coming from a sincere good place. And this is my response to him saying that. If I had bad intentions with you, I would not say a word to you and give you the proof of how God is real. I would keep this information from you, so you will stay as you are and never change yourself to follow God, so you get condemned on Judgment Day. You are known for saying, 
How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? If I believed without a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming to hit you and you didn't believe it, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. I hope you can review this information so you can realize this truck is about to hit a lot of people in the world so you can help save people from getting hit by the truck yourself with the many people who listen to you. And as you said yourself, tackling someone to get into heaven and avoid eternal punishment is more important than saving someone from a truck. Regarding your accusation that I have bad intentions, I bring attention to what is wrong so you can know and do what is right. I sent you information to help you and the world know the truth about reality. It is ironic you feign being insulted when you made a video of yourself disrespectfully throwing Bibles on the ground and kicking a Bible. I, on the other hand, am not wasting my time feeling offended by any insults or lack of respect on your part. I'm still trying to help you into heaven regardless, as I wish you would do for me if our roles were reversed. I said I found it interesting that atheists ask for proof of God's existence. But even if I offer to pay an atheist to research the proof of God's existence, they may still refuse to look at the proof. That's a true statement, not an insult. But if you want to believe I have bad motives and that you feel insulted by me for trying to help you realize how you are ignoring the proof you have been prodding Christians to give you for years, that's not a reflection of my character, but yours. It is deceitful and cowardly for atheists to ask for proof or say that there isn't enough proof, especially in your case of making videos and publishing books about this subject matter but then refuse to inspect the proof when it is given. If I have to state how an atheist is being cowardly and deceitful to help them realize that they should be inspecting this evidence, then I don't have a problem doing so. You said yourself that if a truck is bearing down on a person, you should tackle them so they don't get hit by the truck. Me being blunt with you right now is my way of tackling you so the truck does not hit you. But you are too busy complaining about how I am tackling you instead of being grateful that I am trying to save you from getting hit by a truck. I had no malice in what I said. If you're pretending that I am some sort of villain as a tactic to misdirect and bring attention away from your own inadequacies and as an excuse to not look at the evidence, that's your call. In regards to you saying that you like to read, as if you would read about my evidence in a book or a news article one day, think about it this way. The Pharisees tried to hide the evidence of Jesus being the Messiah. The Pharisees tried killing Jesus when they tried killing Lazarus, when Jesus brought Lazarus from the dead, to erase the evidence that Jesus is the Messiah. Expect there to be the same kinds of people today who would go to those same lengths to erase the truth I am giving to you. When you are dealing with a world with factions of people fighting for power and to manipulate the narrative to favor their desired outcome, don't expect mainstream media to tell you what is true concerning God. The Jews and the Christians had to protect their scripture to retain the historical account of the truth from being forgotten amongst the many other civilizations that try to erase the truth from being known. I am now doing this in our time. Don't expect to read an unbiased article about my findings in mainstream media. A powerful person filed a lawsuit against me to censor this information, and mainstream media did not report this lawsuit or report on the proof of God's existence. This information has also been deleted from media sharing platforms. People are trying to prevent this information from getting out. So don't expect to get the truth from someone else, as if the world is going to freely welcome receiving the truth. In a world of sin and unholiness, the darkness does not want the light to shine. If Penn does not respect Christians who don't proselytize, then why should we respect atheists who don't listen to the evidence for God? Penn also has a podcast called Penn's Sunday School. The title of the show is making fun of how Christians have Sunday school. And the joke is that Penn represents a perspective that is against Christianity. So it's as if he is teaching people things against Christianity at his Sunday school. And the picture of Penn that represents the show that's on the show's website appears to be Penn representing the devil, where he had his eyes photoshopped red and there's flames in the background and he made himself look like he's the devil. In the way he describes his own show on his own website, is, quote, will examine religious news. And I just gave him news that proves that Christianity is true. He's ignoring the biggest religious news there is. And he has a show that he describes as examining religious news. And this is something that I've noticed with atheists. Almost always, they're only willing to examine evidence for God if they think the evidence isn't enough to prove that God is real. 
If they have some sort of way to try to make it look like evidence for God isn't good enough, then they have the willingness to try to discuss the issue. Because it appears that their plan is always to try to make the evidence for God look like it's not real evidence for God. But if they can't do that, then they're scared away. Because most of them never wanted truth to begin with. They typically only want to believe in one narrative, and that's that God isn't real. And they only want to think about things and discuss things that reinforce what they already want to believe in. But typically when I show them the evidence that proves that God is real, they try to come up with every excuse to not look at it. I'll tell them a little bit about the claims that I'm proving to them. And then they notice how confident I am. And they can tell that I actually know what I'm talking about. And then they quickly back out. They usually try to stay away from it as much as they can because they're not interested in the truth. They're afraid of it. And of the numerous atheists that I've done this with, virtually all of them have the same reaction. They try to come up with every excuse to avoid looking at the evidence. Or if they take the time to look at the evidence at all, they usually always resort to trickery or manipulation. Or they just say, oh, this is all crazy. And they don't explain why it's crazy. If a person is not intelligent enough to explain why what they're calling crazy is crazy, then they're no more intelligent than the person they're calling crazy. My beef is not with religion per se. My difference of opinion is with objective and subjective reality. Uh, Einstein said, you know, the big question is, when you turn away, is the tree still there? I think there's a real reality out there. So, uh, but that's the world I want to live in. I want to live in a world of a marketplace of ideas where everybody is busted on their bullshit all the time because I think that's the way we get to truth. That is also what respect is. What we call tolerance nowadays, what we call tolerance is often just condescending. It's often just saying, okay, you, you believe what you want to believe, that's fine with me. I think true respect is one of the reasons I get along so much better with fundamentalist Christians than I do with, um, with liberal Christians. Because fundamentalist Christians, I can look them in the eye and say, you are wrong. They also know that uh, I will always fight for their right to say that. And I will, uh, I will celebrate their right to say that. But I will look them in the eye and say, you're wrong. And fundamentalists will look me in the eye and say, you're wrong. And that, to me, is respect. The more liberal religious people who go, there are many paths to truth. You just go on and maybe you'll find your way is the way you talk to a child, and I, and I bristle at that. So I do very well with proselytizing hardcore fundamentalists, and at a very deep level, I respect them, and at a very deep level, I think I, um, I, uh, I share a big part of their heart. I think in a certain sense, uh, uh, I'm a preacher. My heart, my heart is there. I'm going to give you a brief explanation of the evidence that I was presenting to Penn. If you want to see the whole video of the evidence that I have presented, go to michaelcastingpearls.com forward slash truth. But here is the brief explanation. To briefly explain my testimony, someone in Hollywood has a global cult and is putting marks on their followers' bodies, like how it's prophecy the Antichrist will do in the Bible. This person is also one of the biggest investors in Silicon Valley. He also makes songs about the apocalypse and gathering soldiers for a holy war that his followers sing, and some of the lyrics are about how he is the devil. Multiple people have had experiences with God where they were told that this person is the Antichrist from the Bible, also known as the false prophet, and these people did not formally know this person had a cult prior to their spiritual experiences, revealing that he is the false prophet. I am one of the people God contacted to tell this information to and share this with the world. I had a spiritual experience where God told me that I am Michael, the messenger of God of the end time. And God told me who the Antichrist is, the false prophet. I then did some research and discovered that in the Bible, there is a passage in the book of Daniel, verse 12-1, that an individual named Michael will appear for God's people during the end time. And I also discovered that the person that God told me is the Antichrist has a global cult and is putting marks on his followers' bodies, like how it's prophesied in the book of Revelation that this person will do. I had no idea that this person had a cult or was putting marks on people's bodies prior to having this spiritual experience. The mark that he is putting on their bodies just so happens to be the Christian cross 
that is defaced by the New World Order symbol, which translate to meaning Antichrist, which is the most fitting symbol for what the Mark of the Beast could be. The triangular symbol here is an outline of the reverse side of the Great Seal of America, and the Latin underneath this symbol is Novus Order Seclorum, and it's Latin for New Order of the Ages. It's a symbol that means bringing forth a new order, and this person has this symbol defacing the Christian cross. And this clearly means that this person is putting his New World Order on top of the Christian order, God's order. I went to a Christian I knew to tell this information to, and before I could even tell him the story of what happened to me, he interrupted me as I was about to tell him the story. And then he starts telling me about a story about how God told him that the messenger of God was going to appear to him in a year and a half, and that it's now been a year and a half, and that the messenger of God should be visiting him any moment now. I then told him what had happened to me, and that God told me that I am the messenger of God. I've experienced this multiple times with other random people, where they were told by God that they were going to encounter God's end-time prophet. And this is something else that happened to me. I was walking down the street one day, and a man was glaring at me from the other side of the sidewalk, and he was looking at me as if he wanted to kill me, and as if he was afraid of me. And it happened to be the person that God told me is the Antichrist. It was as if God or Satan had told him that Michael, his nemesis, is across the street. And it was as if he knew exactly who I was. And then he showed up at my workplace five to six months later. I had not yet released any information about him being the Antichrist yet. So it's not like he could have looked at me with that kind of hate and fear, unless a spirit told him who I was. Here's something else that happened. I was contacted by a woman who told me that she figured out that Jer Leto is the Antichrist without previously knowing about my testimony. And when she asked God for a confirmation of whether or not Jared Leto is the Antichrist, her phone made a sound as if it had just gotten a message. And when she looked at her phone, my website appeared on her phone with the information about Jared Leto being the Antichrist on it. One night, really late, my uh, text went off on my phone and, and I took it because my mother's 97 and you never know. And, so I looked at it, and it wasn't a text message at all. It was the internet with your website on it. Do you believe that God sent you? I do. I do. Uh, how did you feel when my website, with my testimony on it, saying that Jared Leto is the Antichrist, well, the false prophet? Well, I couldn't prophet. believe it. It said, there's a book, read the book. <laughs> you know, there were tapes, there were... You had the same things I had. You had just put them down and showed all of them uh -huh. but yeah i was validated so someone else had some vision or a covenant or something that brought them to the same conclusion before i ever publicly released my testimony and revealed that jared leto is the antichrist and that he's trying to take over the world there were two individuals who made a video about jared leto attempting to take power in the world and how he was potentially going to try to become president of the United States or some sort of world leader. And to my knowledge, these people aren't Christians. They were just paying attention to the behaviors of Jared Leto and independently came to the conclusion that he was trying to create a cult to gain massive political power. This is important because it demonstrates that even without a religious context, you can understand that Jared Leto is trying to manipulate the world to gain massive political power. That you don't even need to believe in God to understand that Jared Leto is trying to become a world leader. So if these two people can understand that Jared Leto is using this cult that he has to gain massive political power in the future, then everybody else should be able to. But we thought that there was a bit more going on beneath the surface. Um, we have come to the conclusion that he is definitely being propped up by some kind of deep state government entity to uh, most likely run for office, and we think that it's most likely the presidential office. Something else that's interesting is that Jared Leto has a pseudonym. Jared Leto sometimes refers to himself as Bartholomew Cubbins, and sometimes Jared Leto uses this other name to refer to himself when he directs music videos or films. He even sells t-shirts that say, who the F is Bartholomew Cubbins? because he tried to make it some sort of trend or inside joke among his fans to figure out who Bartholomew Cubbins is, when many of them knew who it really was. Named Bartholomew Cubbins. Bartholomew Cubbins. And this is, uh, did you direct this too or no? No, a very, very talented uh, newcomer named Bartholomew Cubbins. What He's are you laughing here. about? <laughs> is he here? Thank you.
Where is Bartholomew Covens? Does anybody know? In an interview with the New York Times, Jared Leto plainly says that he is Bartholomew Covens. And when you look up the name Bartholomew Covens on Wikipedia, there's a section on a Wikipedia article about how Jared Leto is Bartholomew Covens, and that Bartholomew Covens is an archangel that is here on Earth to fight during the apocalypse. This was originally posted on Wikipedia in 2011, long before God ever told me that Jared Leto was the Antichrist. Obviously, this is referring to Jared Leto being the archangel that is here to fight during the apocalypse. And obviously, this archangel refers to Satan, the incarnation of Satan. It's somewhat of a mystery how this article even showed up on Wikipedia. And the article states that the source of this information is the Illuminati. And the article also states that this is stated in Jewish writings. And the Bible does state that Satan and the false prophet will go to war against God and the apocalypse. And of all the people in the world that this article is about, it just so happens to be Jared Leto, the person that God told me is the Antichrist, the false prophet, the incarnation of Satan. And Jared Leto also said in an interview that the incarnation of Satan has been born on earth. Many years ago, at a land not too far away, there was a child born. His name was Satan. There appears to be a pattern with Jared Leto saying that the incarnation of Satan is here on Earth, when he's actually referring to himself in the third person, like how he also does with referring to himself as Bartholomew Cubbins. I only discovered all of this after God told me that Jared Leto is the Antichrist. If Jared Leto is the one who posted this on Wikipedia, you may wonder to yourself, why would he do this? Think about it this way. There's a project called Cicada 3301. These were a series of puzzles that a group of people released to the public. And then people had to go through this long puzzle. And once you figured out the answer to the puzzle, the group who created the puzzle would offer you membership into their group. Jared Leto making this elaborate riddle, asking people who Bartholomew Cubbins is, may be similar to Cicada 3301. This could be something that Jared Leto did to bring people into his cult, to bring in the most loyal members into his cult and help them realize that he is the Antichrist, that he is Satan. Perhaps Jared Leto is doing this to plant seeds in people's minds, to be more welcoming and accepting of who Jared Leto is if the world finds out that he is Satan. And this could be a way of preemptively telling people who he is so people are more ready to accept the information. Perhaps Jared Leto is trying to recruit the most loyal people to figure out who's going to be loyal to him and which people he can really trust into some sort of echelon. And the echelon is what he calls his cult. He even puts that name on his t-shirts and that's what his cult members call themselves. The 30 Seconds to Mars subreddit is like pretty dead, but there is a secret one, r slash echelon. Then he also sings his music in churches. It appears that Jared Leto is trying to bring Satan into Christianity and to taint Christianity and to also lure Christians into Satanism. Most of Jared Leto's music is like this. And Jared Leto also has something called the Church of Mars. This is something that he sometimes calls his gatherings. And whether people realize it or not, they go to these events where Jared Leto sings before them and they're worshiping Satan. This is video footage of Jared Leto and his Church of Mars in London, in a Christian church. Notice how he's using religion to bring people into his cult and into his music. The church probably just feels flattered that a famous celebrity is offering to sing in their church. And in their eyes, they may just see it as a good opportunity for the church. But little do they know that Jared Leto is the false prophet from the Bible. And he's using this as an opportunity to take over Christian churches and to bring people from Christianity into worshiping the devil. The Church of Mars events are usually in more intimate settings than the normal rock concert that Jared Leto puts on, where he tries to create a worship environment for himself. Jared Leto is very aware that the world is falling apart and that people are looking for hope. And Jared Leto appears to be manipulating people's desire to have hope in something by trying to make people have hope in him. And that way he can become their God and control them. One more time. And notice the hand sign that Jared Leto and his audience are putting up. It's the New World Order symbol. This is like Jared Leto's Nazi salute. Hitler used a hand sign to signify his allegiance to a cause. And Hitler's followers mimicked Hitler. And now Jared Leto is throwing up a hand sign. And his followers are following suit. Jared Leto even made a music album titled 
this is the end of the world, but it's a beautiful day. The phrase provito in altum roughly translates to promote yourself, promote yourself high, or exalt yourself, which are all things that the Bible tells you not to do. Basically, this phrase embraces the concept of pride, to have so much pride in yourself, and to think that you're so entitled to things. It's the opposite of what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches people to be humble. Jared Leto teaches people to be prideful. This is extremely similar to a verse in Isaiah 14, 12 through 16. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. This verse mentions Lucifer in the King James Version of the Bible. In the precise location where the term Lucifer is in the Bible, it describes this person as trying to ascend to the Most High. And here Jared Leto has the tattoo, Provito in Altum. Jared Leto's motto, Provito in Altum, nearly perfectly describes Lucifer in the Bible. It's as if it's a direct reference to this passage in the Bible. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. In the context of Jared being the Antichrist, Jared Leto's motto, Provito un altum, can be interpreted to mean, I will make myself like the Most High. I will make myself like the Most High. It nearly perfectly matches this description. And Jared Leto has this motto all over his merchandise and music videos that he makes, and also his album art. And Satan in the Bible is trying to promote himself to become God, to promote himself to the Most High. So it makes sense that Jared Leto, as the Antichrist, would use this as a motto to promote himself to the Most High and to encourage other people to be disobedient to God as well. I only discovered all of this after God told me that Jared Leto is the Antichrist. There are multiple times in Jared Leto's music where he calls himself the devil. And one of the lyrics is, I swear to God I'm the devil. And most of Jared Leto's music is about hell, Satan, Judgment Day, going to hell for your sins, referring to himself as the devil, gathering soldiers for a holy war. And Jared Leto has also brought his followers to a private island where he dresses up as if he's their messiah, as if he's Jesus Christ. He also walks out in public wearing an upside down cross. Jared Leto made a music video about him fighting in a war where he eventually builds an Illuminati empire, where he creates a giant pyramid, a giant Illuminati symbol from the war he just fought in. And this music video is called This Is War. Jared Leto directed a music video where he has a Christian priest, a Muslim priest, and a rabbi throwing their holy scriptures into a fire. Satan is at war with the Abrahamic faiths, and Islam warns people of the Antichrist as well. And he also made a music video about the Illuminati forming an empire and enslaving people in it. Is that a coincidence too? Is this all a coincidence? Is it just a coincidence that Jared Leto looked at me across the street like he wanted to kill me? And then five to six months later, he showed up at my workplace. Is that a coincidence too? It's just a new beginning. I don't believe in things.
I have been obeying God by sharing my testimony with people to help people become aware of this information. And like in Ezekiel 33, it is our job to warn people of the oncoming dangers that God warns us about. The Antichrist is trying to create a cult to tempt people to join it and pull us away from God. We must warn people of this so people do not join this cult, take the mark of the beast, and go to hell. As you can see, there's empirical proof of God's existence. All of these prophecies in the Bible would not be happening right now if God did not exist and if Christianity were not true. Very rarely am I busted on something where I'm right. You know, if someone's taking the trouble to let me know I've said something wrong, chances are I'm wrong. 